Hey, we're going to get rolling in here today. Um, the first chart I'm going to bring in front of you is a crude oil market or the crude oil chart. This is a weekly chart and why we need to highlight it in here today is today front month crude oil traded to their highest level since 2014. And if you go back on this chart back to 2010 through 2014, you can see at that point we spent the majority of the time between $80 and 110 unlike the previous five, six years when we spent the more majority of time between 40 and $70. The big debate right now in the market, and we're breaking out today because of some tensions in the Middle East, is are we going to trade at that upper end of that range from a few years ago, or more like seven, eight years ago, or are we going to fail in here right now? If you're bullish commodity markets and bullish inflation, you're liking this chart here right now on this breakout higher. Now the next one I want to bring to you is an S&P 500 chart. And this just goes back in here a couple of years. The purple line we have on there is a 50 day moving average. And as you can see over the last six months, or really over the last four or five months, we've gone below the 50 day moving average a couple of times and then always bounce back. Now, is this a correction in the overall uptrending market in here right now? Or is, this, or is the S&P a little more trouble than what we'd want to think? A concern we have sitting here today is energy prices are making costs for consumers all higher. That's probably why retail sales were down last week. And then I get over to this next chart in here right now, which is a 10-year treasury yield and showing us we've got the highest interest rates in the 10-year note in nearly, in nearly two years. This higher interest rate is negative for the equity markets in here. Again, you have both the bull and the bear argument when you come to the outside markets. We just wanted to show you what we're seeing in here right now. Let's get over to the bean market quick. And we think the thing you need to watch in here right now is the price difference between US beans and where they're at in South America. As you can see on this chart in front of us, and for February delivery, we're eight cents a bushel more expensive. For March, we're 20 cents more expensive. For April 15 and May, seven cents. What you need to remember though is Brazil's got about a 40 cent freight advantage over us. So now over the next three, four, five months, if you are China and you're buying soybeans, you're buying Brazil supplies in here right now as it's ranging anywhere from 40 to 60 cents cheaper than buying beans from the US. The other thing that's important to remember with this chart is it tells us that the crop issues in South America may not be as bad as what the market is making up. We go back a year ago. A year ago, we had corn offered out of Brazil around a 20 cent discount to US. Crop issues started showing up. Then all of a sudden, US and Brazil prices were at parity. Crop issues got worse. Brazil corn then got to a 50, 60 cent premium to the US market. What Brazil does to slow down their exports is they just raise the price. We need to watch a spread in here right now. If Brazil stays competitive in here through the summer months, it tells us that the crop is getting a little bit bigger from what the market thinks, not smaller. I'm gonna to get towards a Minneapolis wheat contract and I know not everyone raises spring wheat, but this is something we need to pay attention to here. The curving lines on here are moving averages with the blue line, the 40 day, the purple line is a 50 day. And if you look at the horizontal lines going across, we have that as retracement levels. When the market ends up going up quite a bit or down, down a bit, we look towards the retracement levels of giving us where we could target. A 50% retracement from the April low to the fall high in March Minneapolis wheat rests at 851. This past week, we went down to 875. If this market's going to hold together, it should hold in here at this 850 area. Okay, um, the one thing we need to remember with Minneapolis wheat is it does have some bullish fundamentals in here with the reduced supply. It just pulled back in here because our exports were slow and the world markets have pulled back. You know, best thing right now is if this market can stabilize. But when we look at this and want to relate it to corn and bean farmers, our concern is that March Minneapolis wheat broke 18% off of its recent high in just a two month time period. If I bring in here now a March corn chart, that red horizontal line at 506 is an 18% price break from the late December high. If you go back to where our spring high was to our summer low, it was also around a 15 to 20% price break. So when the markets do turn down, a 15 to 20% setback is realistic. 
that bothers us on the corn market when we relate when we relate to what happened over in Minneapolis wheat. If we get towards a bean chart, that horizontal line down 11.52 is also an 18% break from the recent high. If you go back to the summer high to the fall low, we broke 15 to 20% again on soybeans. If these markets start turning back down, a 15 to 20% break could be expected. Right now, it's about South American weather. As we look to wrap this up in here right now, I mean, if you want to be bullish to grain markets, we really think you got to look towards inflation and crude oil and South American weather. Okay. A concern domestically for us, and this is specifically for corn, is we're starting to see some cash basis levels soften up. It appears end users are well bought up. If we have a, a flashing red light out there and the big warning sign for us, it's looking at the managed money positions as specs are net long 340,000 contracts of corn and 106,000 contracts of beans. Bull markets need to be fed. If they're not fed in here right now, we get speculators to liquidate it out. We're going to roll down. I think sitting here today, inflation and crude oil is giving the speculators an advantage in here in the near term. If that market starts softening up in here right now, we got to be really concerned with the big net long position. I think the last thing, and we're really hearing this now the last couple of weeks, and everyone knows that the crop uh, input prices are going up, but they're just going up substantially. And the risk to raising this corn and soybean crop in 2022 is, is probably five to tenfold on what it was last year and the previous year. So, you know, the, the thing we've got to look at, is things are good in here right now, but we need to keep risk management in mind. And as we look forward to either next week or the following week's uh, webinar, we're going to probably put together a specific marketing plan and give you some ideas on how to manage that risk for a new crop especially with input costs being so up, uh, so high. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email in here, um, head to our website, give us a call, and, and, and make sure you like these videos in here. And again, we do this for you. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. Have a great day.